Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about JavaScript. So what's JavaScript? JavaScript is the programming language that you use to modify stuff that you see on the internet. Okay, end of lecture. I'll see you guys on the next video. Alright, but seriously, to get started you'll need to add a script tag to the bottom of your body tag. See your body tag? You want to add a script tag to the bottom of that. Just make sure that it's on the bottom so that you can modify stuff and to avoid trouble later on. Also, if you want to use a separate file for your JavaScript, you can use the src tag. So if we did src here and did file.js for example, file.js, if we did this here and went to file.js and wrote some code there, then it would still work. Just make sure that your script is empty to not confuse people. Alright, so now that we have that out of the way, the first thing we want to do is log some stuff to the, to the, to, to the console. So how can we do that? Well, you will do that with console.log. So what does that look like? Well, let's use console.log to basically make the first thing here. So console.log. Now, inside here you can put numbers, for example, 88. For example, here, if we save this here, and actually go back to our page here and try to take a look at it, you're looking at this and you're not really seeing much. So how can you access this? Well, to access this, you'll need to go to your developer tools. How do you access your developer tools? Well, you can access them by either pressing F12 on Firefox, or you can just uh, view the menus and check it out that way on Chrome. As you can see, we've console.log the number here. All right, so if we go back to our page and take a look at our code, we can console log different things. So instead of numbers, we can console log text like, hello world. So if we save this piece of text here and actually go and take a look, let me just uh, flip the window. All right, yeah. Yeah, now it says hello. Now it says hello world, which is, which means it's working fine. All right. So if we go back to our code, there are a few interesting things that we want to talk about after this, which are variables. So what's a variable? Well, a programming variable is basically the same as a math variable, except you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. So you have a few ways to make variables. You have var, let, and const. Var and let do basically the same thing. But you want to use let just to avoid some problems later on down the road. Talking about the differences between them now would just confuse everybody and it's really not important. Alright, so we're going to do let number equals 888. Eight, eight. So if we do let number equals 888 eight, eight, and actually console.log that. So console.log number, as you can see, we can now show variables on the screen. So if you actually take a look here and go back to our page and take a look, as you can see, it says 888. Let's actually just change that so we make sure that this is actually working properly. Alright, so instead of this, let's do 9000 or 90,000, whatever suits. Alright, so if we do that and actually go take a look, as you can see, it says 90,000 there. So we're getting the result that we want. That's how the console.log works. You can console.log greetings, strings, you can console.log different things. So you do let and then the name of the variable. So let me just let and then uh, greeting for example so greeting equals string so so to make strings you can use you, you can either use these uh, you can either use these quotes or you can use double quotes All right th there's literally no difference it's uh, personal preference and consistency is key all right so let greeting equals maybe if i don't have typos here all right so let greeting equals hello i am javascript so if we save this here so if we save this here and actually take a look at it, it adds a semicolon to the end right there. That semicolon is completely unnecessary. I've just configured my editor that way because I prefer them, but they're completely unnecessary. All right, so if we save that and actually take a look at it, as you can see now on the bottom, as you can see that now on the bottom, uncaught reference error, number is not defined. Well, that's because number doesn't exist here and we need to change console.log number to greeting for this to work. So greeting, so if we save this here, and take a look at it. Make sure that you follow along so you understand this stuff because this is uh, this is pretty easy if you actually follow along. But if you don't, good luck understanding anything. All right, as you can see, it says right there, "Hello, I am JavaScript," with shitty grammar. All right, next up, we are going to talk about consts. So basically, to understand consts, you need to understand a certain concept in JavaScript, which is to change variables. So let's say that we have greeting. So let greeting equals Hello world. Now let's say that we wanted to change this greeting. How can we do that? Well, we can do greeting equals hello, hello everyone. For example, if we do this here and did console.log greeting and save this and actually went to, and actually went to the page and took a look at it, 
just ignore this part that says let here because we don't care about that. As you can see, it says uh, hello everyone. Yeah, this part on the bottom that says get, that's red. Just completely ignore that. We don't really care about that at the moment. As you can see, it says hello everyone. That's how you can change variables. But if you wanted something to never change, instead of using let, you would use const. So if we did const here and save this, and actually get went to the page and took a look, as you can see, you get this crazy error thingy here. Invalid assignment to const. Alright, so you're not supposed to change const, and that's why it won't let you. So if you want to not change anything, you should use a const, uh, you should use const instead of let. But in our case, we're just gonna use let. Alright, so we've talked about all this stuff. Next up, we're gonna talk about data types. So we have a few interesting data types. Firstly, we have numbers. So a number is a number. Notice that in JavaScript, you don't have floats or anything. It's all a number. So that so you can use a fraction, a double, an octal. They're all just called numbers. In other coding languages, usually you would have different types for things like that. But in JavaScript, it's simple. You only have numbers. All right, numbers are pretty easy, and we've went over them. Next up, you have null and undefined. Null basically means nothing. That's the, that's the way to put it simply. And undefined is when you have a variable that you haven't really that you haven't really set a value to. So let me just explain this. All right. So here, when you have a variable, so let greeting. If we just did this and then did console.log greeting. All right. So if we actually just did that here and save that, I went and took a look at the page. As you can see on the bottom there, it says undefined. Why does it say that? Well, it's because we've made the variable, but we haven't added any values to it. That's what undefined is. It means you have a variable without values. But if we add a value here, like hello, if we save this here, and actually take a look at it, as you can see, now it says hello. So that's what uh, so that's what undefined is for. It's for variables that you haven't set values to. All right. I hope that made sense. I'm not sure. Next up, we have strings. Strings, uh, strings are the things that you have between these. Uh, between these uh, quotes. So that's what a string is. Next up we have an array. Now arrays are cool. To put it simply, an array is a collection of other values. So let my so let hobbies equals now to make an array focus on the syntax here because it's a little different. You would do for example we want to have an array of hobbies here. Now each hobby is a string because you don't want a number for array like hobby two help hobby three. We're not interested in that. So let's say coding and programming and software space development development. So if you actually save these three hobbies and fix the typo here, as you can see the syntax is interesting. Firstly, you put the array inside curly brackets, not curly brackets, square brackets. And then you you put a, you put a space between each value with this comma so that you say, hey, this is the first thing in the array, this is the second thing, this is the third thing. So if we actually save these hobbies here and console.log them, hobbies, I'm going to screw up really bad sooner or later with the variables here because I keep forgetting to change them, but whatever. Okay, so if we actually save that and take a look at it, as you can see, you get a list. So an array is basically a list. Yeah, it's an overcom It's a list with a lot of cool features. That's what an array is, to, to put it in really simple language. As you can see, we have all these. We have software development, coding, and program. So we have those, so we have those down. What do we have next up? Next up, after arrays and strings, we have string concatenation. So what's string concatenation? String, string concatenation is really cool. Let's say that we had a couple variables here. Now notice, this might get really complicated really fast, but I'm pretty sure you guys can follow along pretty well. Alright, so let's say that we had a few strings. So let age equals negative 5,000. Let age equals 5,000. For example, this person's age is 5,000. Alright, and let name equals equals let's set his name to John and instead of 5000 let's just make it a bit let's just make it a little bit bigger All right let's say that we wanted to put these names inside one uh, string and console dot like that string usually you you can do it with a few ways so let's say we wanted to do it the lazy way we would do this console dot log hello I am and then here we will do plus sign to basically add two variables together Make sure that you add the space here because uh, because there is no space. Hello, I am space and then plus name. So we add the name variable and then plus and then another space. And then plus and I am and I am. Let's add the space there and then plus 
8. So if you actually save this here, as you can see, this uh, syntax looks really, really clunky and doesn't help us much. So if you actually save this and double check that I even wrote it right, these things are pretty hard to write sometimes when you're when you're dealing with this weird syntax. So as you can see, it says, hello, I am John and I am 5 billion or whatever. Alright, so if you actually just take a look here, this syntax looks really annoying to write. So how can we simplify it? Well, to simplify it, we could just do this. Alright, so we're going to make a variable called reading. Reading. Now, if we just uh, add, if we just use the plus syntax like we did before, that won't be much of an improvement. But we can use something called a string literal. So what's a string literal? First thing we have here is comp uh, the first thing we did there was uh, string concatenation. But a string literal is basically a level above string concatenation. What does it look like? Well, you would use backticks. To use a so what's a backtick? A backtick is the letter on your keyboard that's next to the one key if you're using a regular American keyboard. Alright, so we're gonna do let greeting. Now notice the syntax here because it's a little different. Use back grip, you use backticks. Say let's say hello, I am. And then here we're gonna do a money sign and then two curly braces. And then inside them we're gonna do the name. And then after that we're gonna do and I am. And then we're gonna do this. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Use these curly braces to ref to put variables inside your strings. All right, we're gonna do age, years old. As you can see, the syntax here is much much easier to handle, and you do much much mistakes. Also, with regular uh, with regular quotes, you can't have a a a uh, a string that's multi line that's on multiple lines, but with uh, backtakes you can. So if you actually just save this here. And go take a look at it. As you can see, we get the same result. Hello, I'm John, and I'm five trillion years old. All right. So if you actually save that, that's how. That's what concatenation and uh, that's what concatenation and uh, literals are. I want you guys to practice this stuff because we can't really do questions today. So yeah. Next up, we have string length. Now this one is pretty simple. You make a string, and then if you add dot length to it, so dot length length like that. If you just do that dot length you get the length of the string. So if you actually save that and go and take a look at it, as you can see right there, it gives you the length of the string which is 46 characters. That's the amount of characters that you have in a string. This is called a property. So what's a property? A property is a thing about something else. So to, so yeah, so like your, so let, let me put this simple. Let's say that we had a human here. A human would have a property called age. So that's what a property is. And then we have something called the, uh, then we have something called a method or a function. Now these modify properties. So what would that look like? Now our human would have an age property, and he would had and he would have an eat method or an eat function, depending on which way you set, you set it. Now that eat function basically incre increases his weight property. For example, this is a hypothetical example, and I'm trying to use it just to make sense, just to make this uh, stuff make sense, because I know it can be really difficult. So here we have two uppercase, which makes a which makes a string uppercase, and this is a method. So make sure that you want that you add these parentheses at the end. That, that's the difference between functions and uh, regular property. So if you actually save this in console.log dot to uppercase and go take a look at it, as you can see now everything is uppercase. So we're getting the result that we want. All right. So next up, we're gonna do a few more interesting things here. All right. So we have substring. Substring is really really cool. It lets you get parts of a string. So if you actually just do greeting dot substring here, so if we so if we do this. So if we do the greeting dot substring, and then let's say two, what does this do? It chops off the first two characters. So if we actually save this and uh, take a look at, and take a look at the result here, if this page would flip for me, all right. As you can see, it removed the first two characters, which is hello. But let's say we wanted to get parts of a string. How would we do that? Well, you would firstly get the first part that you want from the string. Now these start at zero. Make sure that you make that make sure that you keep that in mind. So the H is zero. So as you can see, let's say that you wanted to get only the word only the word hello. We would have to count from zero. So one, so zero is H. E is one. The two L's are uh, two and three. The O is four. So if we do zero and then comma four. So if you do this here and save that, as you can see, instead of getting hello, we get something much worse. All right, so that's uh, so that's one thing that you might fall into. So make sure that you add an extra above the last letter so that you get all the letters. Uh, JavaScript is weird like that. Most languages have their own quirkiness, so that's how you can handle that. Now, as you can see, we got the proper word that we want. All right, so if you actually go back here, 
and take a look. Let's see what we have next up after this. So next up we have string dot split. So what does string dot split do? String dot split splits your string and turns it into an array. So if we do split here and then here we can put a value. So what do we split it by? So we basically split it between every space. So between each space we get an item in an array. It's a really cool function that you can use. So if we actually save that and go take a look at the console output here. As you can see on the bottom it gives you an array. So hello I am John and I am whatever years old. Okay so we have that. So you get the effect that you want with the, with the, with these splits. So these turn things into a, into arrays, which are pretty cool. Now, since we've already just uh, splitted this, let's turn let's just turn this entire thing into an array and call it a day. So instead of here, we're gonna do we're gonna do let not let don't use. Make sure that if you change a variable that you don't do let greeting again. This is wrong. Don't do this. Just do greeting. Greeting equals Reading dot split, and then put a space in there just to make sure that it splits it by spaces. Now we have this array. So how can we access stuff inside this array, and what can we do with it? Well, to access just a single word in the array, remember that we start counting from zero. So the first item in this array is hello. So if we do console dot log reading, and then do and then do square brackets, and then zero, we get the first word in the array, which is hello. So if we save that and actually go and take a look. As you can see, the first word here is hello, so we get only the first word, which is the first item in the array. I hope this all makes sense, just make sure that you experiment with it a lot, so that you get it. Now let's say that we wanted to get the name. What value is the name? Is it 0? Is it 25? What do you think? Alright, so if you said the so if you said the value for the name is act so if you said the value of the name is actually 4, then you're wrong. The value of the name would be uh, would be three. So if we did three here, because you start counting from zero. So hello is zero, I is one, am is two, and name is three. So if we do help, so if we do greeting square brackets three and save that and actually go and take a look at it, as you can see, you get the name variable. All right. So that's how so that's how that works. But let's say we wanted to add some stuff to this array. How can we add stuff to this array? Well, you can you can add stuff to an array pretty simply. You would use a few methods here that we're gonna talk about, with such as push. So, so what does greeting dot push do? So, greeting dot push. All right. So greeting dot push basically adds something to the end of your array. So we, let's say we wanted to add something to the end of the array. Let's say cool. The word cool. So if we do greeting dot push the word cool and hit and then in here just just uh, console dot log the entire greeting and take a look at it. As you can see. As you can see, it's it shows you the array, but it doesn't quite show you the entire thing. So we're just gonna. So let me just open this. Or so if I click on that, as you can see on the bottom there, it says cool. Now there's a now there's a cool way to access stuff from the end of the array. So instead of doing a, uh, let me just uh, okay, fi final thing switch. So instead of uh, doing uh, so instead of uh, counting here and doing greeting, you can just do from the end and just do negative one, so you can get the last item in the greeting. Now this is a really really cool feature that helps you out a lot. All right, so if you actually save that and uh, open the and open the console here, and open the console here and get a look at oh, oh undefined. Yeah, this is a yeah this is a higher end feature that you need the compiler and all sorts of weird stuff to get to work. But okay. Sometimes, sometimes you don't get what you want. All right. So next up after this, we have array dot unshift. So what does this do? Greeting dot unshift. Greeting dot unshift. Not unshift. Unshift. <laughs> All right. So greeting dot unshift basically adds something to the beginning of an array. So let's say not. All right. So if we console dot log the greeting here. All right. So if we console dot log not, not like that. Not like that. Reading, yeah, like this. So if you do, so if you do that and save that, and actually go and take and take a look at it, as you can see, it shows you an array, and the first item on the array is not. So that's how you can add items to the beginning of an array. Now you can have numbers and different kinds of items in an array. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to have everything to be the same. Like everything is a string here. All right. So that's uh, unshift. But let's say we wanted to remove a few, uh, the first uh, the top item in the array or the last item. For that, you would use pop. So let's say greeting dot pop. All right. So if we did greeting dot pop here and save that, and actually went and took a look at the page, as you can see right there, it get you get the normal array. It says hello John and I am 
it says then the years but it doesn't say old because that's the last thing in the array and we remove that with uh, the pop function or method i'm saying function or method because they're basically inter interchangeable so don't get confused there all right we're going to talk about those in a bit also next up we have index of so what's index of index of basically let's say that you wanted to get the word uh, let's say that you wanted to get the word years from this greeting but you weren't sure where it was so you couldn't use the so you couldn't use the square bracket syntax here so to get the to get the location of it in the variable or to get the index of it in the in the array you would use index index of and let's say here we're going to do years so if we do years we get the number so the number that you're supposed to put in the square bracket to get years we can do index of to get that number so if we save that and actually take a look at it as you can see the number is 8 let's say that we go back to our code here and instead of doing index of years we could just do this so we can do here bracket and if we do 8 we get the same result as you can see you get years so it's kind of the reverse of uh, doing the bracket thing so that's how index of works it's re it's really really cool now next up we, after that we have an interesting thing called an object so what's an object? Objects are really best explained with an example. They're like a dictionary. So when you look up a dictionary, you see words on the dictionary and then you see definitions. Objects are the same thing. So if we just remove all this and start and start with a clean slate, let's say we have an we have a person object. So let person 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 equals now you have these curly brackets. Make sure they use curly brackets here. Alright, so this person will have a few interesting properties. So he will have a first name. And this first name will be John. And then he will have a last name. So his last name will be Doe. And then he can have like an ID. So ID equals, let's give it an ID of 1. Yeah, let's keep it at that. Alright, so if we gave him all this stuff here and actually save that, and actually save that nothing will happen let's say that we wanted to access this stuff inside this object how can we do that all right so if, let's say we wanted to see this person's first name so we can do console.log let's use string let's use string literals to get this person's first name all right the client's first name is all right so to access stuff inside an object you would use the object name here so the object name is person so person dot and then first name to access the first name because first name is a property because first name is a property of, of the person now for those of you who are really paying attention yes a lot of things in JavaScript are objects like strings and that stuff that's how you can use properties and met and uh, methods with them and that's how that works but that's just way 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 above the scope of this video so if we actually save that and take a look at it as you can see it says the, the client's first name is John but let's say that we remove this uh, template literal just in case it confuses anyone. Alright, so if we remove that template literal here and just did console.log and then inside here did the person's first name. So person.first name. So if we actually just did that and saved that and went and took a look at it, as you can see, you get the person's first name. So we're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing right. Alright, so let's see what we have next up. Alright, yeah, we've talked about all this stuff and how to use it. Alright. Alright, so we wanted to add a new variable for this person. How can we do that? Well, we can add a thing to it. So we can do person dot money equals. Alright, so let's say that we that this person has this kind of money. That's how you can add a new thing to an object. But you can also do it here. So if you do the comma, make sure that you take that you pay particular uh, make sure that you pay particular attention to the syntax because um, because sometimes you can screw this up and you won't be able to find out why the code isn't working but usually on VS Code and other uh, code editors will let you know that there's a problem at the bottom there if you take a look at the bottom of my editor there's a part that has this warning sign it's, and it says zero but let's say that I blasted out let's say that I blasted it out uh, blasted out a character here so if I blasted this character out as you can see we have two errors which is the X so that's how you can detect if you have any syntax errors inside VS Code other editors have their own ways of doing it. Now this is how you can actually add a new value to the person. So person.money. Now if we dot com if we console dot log if we console dot log this guy's money. Alright, so if we actually just console dot log his money and save that and go to the console, as you can see, he has this insane amount of money. Alright, so next up we have uh, so next up in case you were wondering why it turned into a two, 
it's because this number is it's because this number is absolutely massive and it was rounded up that happens to simplify things and prevent your computer from crashing basically because computing really really big or really really small numbers really causes computers problems so next up you have destructuring and what's destructuring destructuring let's say that you wanted to access like this person's first name last name so doing like person dot first name person person dot last and then doing the Alright, so if you did this, this syntax is clunky and you keep having to repeat personal all over the place, so what can you do about that? Well, you can do this really cool thing called destructuring where you can get value variables outside of, a, outside of an object and just use them normally. So we're going to do let and then curly brackets and then equal person. So what do you do? Well, inside these curly brackets, you want to get the things that you want. You specify the things that you want to pull out of this person object. So first name. Alright, so let's say I wanted to get the person's first name and his last name. Now we can just access them like this. Instead of doing person dot first name, we can just do we can just do log. Right, so we can just do first name. Alright, and then last name. So last. Alright, so we can do this. This is what uh, this is what destructuring allows you to do. It's a really really simple concept, and it's a really really useful one. Alright, so if we actually save that and uh, take a look at it as you can see you get the person's first name and his last name without having to do person so that's how object uh, so that's how object destructuring works the uh, destructuring can get pretty complicated but aside from that it's pretty simple next up we have an array of objects so let's say that you wanted to have an array and that array should have lots of objects in it so let's say so let's make an array like that so let people equals array and inside this array we're gonna have objects so first name equals John right I'm just gonna give these guys only a first name just to simplify stuff and then we're gonna give this guy a first name equal uh, I don't know I ran out of names already alright so let's give this guy a first name of Alex alright so if we have these two guys how would you access Alex's first name through console.log how would you do that think about think about that you have an array and then inside the array you have objects you basically want to combine arrays and objects and use the features that we've talked about to get the result that you want. Now if your brain is spinning and your head is about to explode, don't worry, it's pretty simple to do. I really want you to try this out first, so pause the video and actually make an attempt on this. Okay, great. If you guys managed to do this, congratulations, you're following along really well and you guys should give yourselves a pat on the back. For the rest of us, here's how we can do it. We will do console.log. We don't have to put everything inside console.log, but we want to do that for now just so that we can see it. The first thing we have is an array. So we want to basically count the items in this array. So if we did, so if we did people, all right, so we're going to do people two, and then we're going to do first name, right? So if we did this here and save that and actually went and take a look at it, as you can see, we get an error because we screwed up. Why did we screw up? Well, it's because you don't count from one row, you count from zero. So the first one here, which is done, this one is zero. And then the second one is one. So yeah, you always count from zero. There is this uh, funny joke around with programming that it says real programmers count from zero. <laughs> All right, so that's, uh, so that's where that joke comes from. Most programming languages handle arrays this way. All right, so instead of doing zero, we're supposed to do one here. We want Alex, not uh, John. So if we actually save that and take a look at it, as you can see, we get Alex's name. All right. So that's how arrays of objects work. Now, next up, we have making your code do be decisive, make its own decisions. All right, so how can we basically make our code decisive? All right, so let's say we want to check if something is blue or if it's red and stuff like that, or if a user is logged in or not. All right, so let's say let color equals blue. I don't really have some uh, useful examples to give you because uh, we don't want we want to keep this stuff super simple and I want you guys to try it out for yourselves just to make sure that you get the results that you're expecting and so that you understand the concept properly. Alright, so an if else statement, all this stuff basically lets you do something based on some, based on a variable or a value or something else. So if the color is red, do this. If the color is blue, do that. Yeah, that's a, that sort of thing. Alright, so how do you do this? Well the syntax here is pretty easy. You do F and then the thing you want to check for and then you open these curly brackets and then inside these you will do the thing that you want to do if the thing inside these uh, parentheses works. Now I use thing way too much there and that doesn't make any sense at all. So let's actually just test that out. 
Alright, so we're gonna do if color triple equals triple equals blue. We're gonna do console.log console dot log the color is blue. So if we actually just save that piece of code right there and go and take a look at it, as you can see, it says the color is blue, so we're getting the result that we want. Now you might be wondering why triple equals? That's a lot of equals right there. I know it's a lot of equals, but you want to use triple equals instead of double equals because uh, to put it simply, double equals doesn't do type checking. And uh, for the people out there who actually know what type checking is, they're probably freaking out and saying, why does this exist? Well, yeah, the JavaScript guys also freaked out once they realized how bad that is and just made triple equals. So you should just use triple equals and ignore double equals for now. They basically do the same thing, but in certain cases, double equals can screw you. Alright, so this is one of the things that we can do with an if statement. But let's say that color is not blue, so what we do? We will do else. So if the color is blue, uh, do this, and if the color is not blue, do that. So we're gonna do console.log, the color is not blue. So if we actually just save this example here and went and take a look and took a look at it, as you can see, it says the color is blue because the color is actually blue. But let's assume that the color variable here was red, for example. So if we say so, if we swap this out for red and save that and went and take a look at it and went and took a look at it, the color is not blue. As you can see, we get the result that we're expecting because we're checking if the color is blue and if it's and if the color is actually blue, we will tell we will lock the console that the color is blue. Else, if it's not blue, we'll console that like the color is not blue. But let's say that we wanted to check if it's blue or if it's red. So else if, so we can do this. So we can do else if and then open parentheses here. Color equals, not quadruple equals, color is equal to red. We will change this here to, to be, alright, we're gonna change this here to be color is red. Alright, let me just make this more consistent the color is red. So if we actually do this here and save that and take a look at it, as you can see because the color is red it says the color is red. But let's say the color wasn't red or blue. Instead you wanted to basically have a catch-all value so in, in case the color wasn't red or wasn't blue and wasn't anything else, here's what you can do. You add a you add an else statement. Notice the notice the uh, notice the brackets here because if and else if both have parentheses but else doesn't Alright, so we're gonna console.log here. We're gonna do console.log log the color is not blue or red. So if I actually just save that example here and uh, let, let me just uh, modify the color first. So instead of red, we're gonna do green. Alright, so if we make the color green here and save that and take a look at it, as you can see, it says the color is not blue or red. So we're getting the result that we want. And that's how that works. Now, I know this piece of code here is really complicated if you're just starting out. So, experiment, 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 experiment. Also, did I mention you should experiment? Yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to make it clear to you. Look, if you're expecting to basically understand programming just from an instructor and you're not willing to do your own thing, then good luck learning. You just won't. I'm going to be honest with you guys. You just can't learn this stuff by just watching a video. You have to go out and do it for yourself. So that's why I'm telling you to do all this stuff by yourself. Right, so next up we have the ternary operator. Now what's the ternary operator? The ternary operator, the ternary operator is basically a way to write if statements really, really fast. So let's say that let color equals blue. Let's say we're going to remake the last example. So let's say color equals, so color triple equals blue. We're going to do a question mark. And then after this question mark, we will put what we should do if the color is blue. And then, alright, so we're going to do console.log, the color is blue. And then, and then we're going to add a colon, and then here we're going to do, we're going to specify what to do if the color is not blue. So console.log, the color is not blue. So if we actually just save this example and make sure that I wrote it properly, yeah. Okay, so firstly you want to do color equal triple equals and then the thing you want to check and then question mark and then after the question mark you put the thing you want to do if the if the value is true and a colon if the value is false. So some things are true and some things are false. You can even make variables that are true or false. So let variable equals true. So if you put this variable inside an if statement, so if variable, so if true, 
which will always be true. But if this variable was false, then the code inside here wouldn't run it. So that's how that works. All right, and that's the ternary operator. It's it's a really really cool way to basically write if statements really simply and make stuff that looks really cool. Just make sure that you don't overuse it because it, things can get really crazy and it will look, and it will look really really confusing if you actually overuse it. Now next up we have the and and or operators. So how do these work? Well, the or operator, which is the second one here, I'm going to explain how that works. All right, so we're going to do or. So let's say if color equals if the color is equal to blue or which is the double type character see this uh, character here this backslash if you do shift backslash on most American keyboards you can get this pipe character so we're basically doing color equals blue so if the color is blue or if the color if the color is red console.log I like this color this is just an example here and we're making it really simple but usually these would get pretty complicated pretty fast but don't worry about it as you can see it says I like this color if we change the color to red we would still get I like this color so red so if we said red as you can see it says I like this color we are getting the same we're getting the same result so that's how that works next up we have the and operator so what's AND? The AND is basically the same as OR, but instead of one of these values being true, both have to be true. So if we do AND here, AND, because the color can't possibly bl be blue and red at the same time, this, uh, nothing will happen. So we're going to add an ELSE statement here. So ELSE, ELSE console.log, your color sucks, your color sucks. Alright, so if you actually just save that and went and take a look at it, as you can see, it says your color sucks. Why does it say that? It's because your color can't possibly be blue and red at the same time, unless you had purple or something. But uh, yeah, and that's how that's how those works. Next up, we have these really really cool things called loops. So what's a loop? A loop is is a piece of code that you want to run as long as something else is happening. So as long as this number is less than ten, keep running this piece of code. So that's what a for loop does. So we're going to write one. I'm going to write one up here just real quick. So for. So the first thing we have here. This might look a bit crazy with all the colors. But it's really simple. All right, so the first thing we have here is the index. So the index is basically the thing that you want. That you want to check the variable on. And then next up after that we have this part. So this part basically decides whether to run the group or not. The, the loop or not. So if we say. So. So what does this part do? Let's just delete this part because it's completely unnecessary. Let's focus on this part here inside the parentheses. Alright, so what does this do? Firstly, we make uh, we make a variable called index and that set that to zero. Make sure that you put the semicolons here because they actually matter inside for loops. Next up, we have the index. So what's an in so next up we next up after we define the index, we have this thing over here. So what does this do? It says as long as the uh, it says as long as the index is less than 10 keep running this for loop and then after that increase the index by one so every time we run this loop we increase the index by one so if we console.log here so console.log console.log we have ran this loop alright and here we're gonna do index you can access the index variable inside the for loop times alright so if you actually save this and let me just make sure that I didn't make any typos alright so if we actually save that and went and take a look at it as you can see, the first one is, you, we have ran this loop zero times. Why does it say zero times? That sounds really strange. Well, it says zero times because the first time we run this for loop, the index is set to zero. But then the second time, we increase it by one because that's what I index plus plus is doing. Plus plus increases something by one and negative negative reduces something by one. So that's, what, so that's the result that we're getting. But let's say that we wanted to change this example so that instead of increasing the index by one we increase it by two so instead of in doing index plus plus we can do index equals index plus two so if we do this here and add the equals just make sure that you add that yeah you can screw up the syntax a lot you're gonna screw up the syntax a lot when you're starting out but just practice uh, but, pra but just remember practice makes perfect so if we actually just do this here and uh, take a look and take a look at it and uh, go back to our page as you can see it's it checks says zero we've run this loop zero times two times four times six eight times All right but we're not going past six but we're not going past eight why is it that because when we run the loop this by the time we've run the loop the sixth the, the sixth 
time, we increase it by 2 and then it's 8. And then we increase it by 2 and then it's 10. But, but the index is now equal to 10. So that's why you're not seeing 10. But if it was equals, but if it was uh, less than or equal to 10, then it would work. So less than or equal, this would work. But the example above wouldn't. So if we actually just save this here and uh, went and took a look at it, as you can see, now we get the number 10 in our for loop because we've said that less than or equal to 10. But if it was less than 10, then we, we wouldn't see 10 because, uh, because this for loop would only run if the index was less than 10. I hope that makes sense. Experiment, experiment, experiment. Did I mention you should experiment? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. All right, so next up we have a while loop. So what's a while loop? Well, a while loop is pretty similar to is pretty similar to a for loop, except it does increases the value. So, while something do something. That's the basic idea. So while i is less, while i is less than ten. Console dot log i. All right. So we're gonna let i equals one. All right. I'm gonna make the i here. So let i equals one. Now you're you're we've fallen into a trap here. This for loop. Uh, this while loop will run forever, so that's why we need to increase i here. So we're going to do i plus plus, just to make sure that we keep increasing i. So if we save that example and take a look at it, as you can see there, let me just double check that everything is running properly. Yeah, as you can see there, we keep increasing i until we reach 9 and then we stop, because by then, i is equal to 10 and we can't run this for loop uh, and we can't run this while loop anymore. So next up, we have this really, really cool loop called a for of loop. So what's this loop about? Well, to put it simply, a for of loop loops through an array without giving you the complicated syntax that you'd have to use other ways. So let's make an array. So let hobbies equals work. Yeah, work is a hobby. Deal with it. Making videos and gaming and sports. All right. So if you actually have, so if you actually Actually, yeah, I like that word. Actually, okay. So if we have this list of arrays, how can we loop through it without using a really weird for loop? Because you can do it the old-fashioned way, or you can do it the new way. So what's the old-fashioned way? So we're gonna. I'm just gonna show you the really old way to loop through it. To loop through it. So index. Index is equal to hobbies. You can do it this way, and this definitely works. Right. This definitely works over here, but the syntax is really complicated and it gets uh, really weird really, fa really fast. So this length property is telling you what the length of this array is. So the length of so the length of this array would be zero, zero, one, two, three. So the length of this array would be three items. All right. So that's how that works. That's one way of doing it. Next up, you have a cool loop called the for of loop. So how would you do this? So for all right. Let me find let me find the thing. All right. So we have for in for each. For up. So what does this? So how does this loop work? So for hobby of hobbies console dot log hobby. So let's just make the hobbies array. So let hobbies equals work ga gaming and football and coding and this random list. So what? How does this for loop work? So for const hobby of hobbies, this const here is mandatory, just to make sure that you uh, don't end up changing the hobby by accident and stuff like that. So basically, look through every hobby in this hobbies array, and uh, that's how it works. To put it, to put it in uh, plain English, and it's pretty magical to be honest. When I figured out, when I figured this out, I was like, it was so amazing when I actually learned about this because uh, it solved a lot of problems at the time. All right, so that's how the for of loop works. We have a few other interesting things. All right, so next up we have the switch statement. So how does the switch statement work? Well, switch statement is when you have a lot of else ifs, you should use the switch statement. So what does the switch statement look? Like? All right, so we're gonna do. So we're gonna make a name. So let name equals John. All right, so we're gonna do a switch here. So we're gonna do a switch. All right, we're gonna do a switch, John. We're gonna do switch name, all right? And then here we're gonna add a case. So what's a case? A case is like an if. This is the stuff that you put inside the parentheses. So we're gonna add a case here for case. So if the name is equal to Cassie. So if the name is equal to Cassie, we're gonna do console.log bad name. I'm just I'm just uh, making up random stuff. Make sure that you put the break here because that's important. All right. Next up, we're gonna add a few more cases. So I'm gonna do so I'm gonna do case John 
then add the colon. The syntax here is a bit weird, but you'll get used to it, I promise. Alright, so we're going to add the colon here. I'm going to do console.log even first name and then the break. Break. And then you have this thing at the bottom called default. So let me just remove that typo. Alright, so and then you have this thing at the bottom called uh, default. So what does default do? Well, default is basically if none of these cases work, what do I do next? So this is the else in your if else statements. This is the else. This is the last thing at the bottom. Alright, so if you actually just save that, make sure that you experiment with these so that you understand how they work properly. Yeah, I'm going to keep telling you to experiment. Right, as you can see, it says even worse thing. But what if the name was Cassie instead of uh, John? Alright, so if we go here and change the name here, so Cassie. So if we save this name here and go and take a look at it, as you can see right there, it says bad name. Alright, so we're getting the result that we want. And that's basically how switch statements work. They're really cool in my opinion, and I really, and they really help you out when you have just lots and lots of cases and you're not feeling like dealing with them. Next up, we have functions. Now, these are the cool things. So what's a function? A function is a piece of code that you want to run over and over and over, but you don't want to write a million times. So what would that look like? Okay, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna end up making a really bad example here, but uh, I just want to clarify this, clarify the uh, function. Actually, let's make a good example. All right, so I'm gonna make a function that says, uh, fun so we're gonna make a function. So if you make a function, you do function and then the function name. So remove initials alright so this function called remove initials and then inside here we're gonna pass in initials so this is a parameter so what's a parameter a parameter is something you send to a function when you call a function so basically so let's say we're gonna make a function I'm gonna make a, I'm making this up so let's say we have a function called uh, get mail and uh, for this function that's called get mail you want to you want to tell you want to tell your employee who gets the mail to get the latest mail. So the parameter that you would pass into this function would be latest. If you wanted him to get the mail from last week, you would tell him get the mail from last week. So the parameter for the function would be last week. So that's the date. That's uh, that's a pretty funky example of how it works. But I hope that you kind of understand the idea. Just make sure that you experiment, experiment, experiment until you get it. So we're gonna say. So we're going to give it the name. So this function will remove initials from the name that we pass in. So we're going to do, so usually initials and then the name have a space between them. So how can we remove, so how can we remove them? Well, we're going to do name dots. We're going to do name dot split. We're going to do name dot split. And then we're going to split and we're going to, and we're going to split by spaces. And then after that, we're going to use the return value. So what's return? I'm kind of really making this up, so that's why I'm kind of slowing down a bit. All right. So we're going to return. So we're going to return the name variable. So we're going to do name. So what does this do? So this basically splits the initials and puts them in an array, and then turns your name into an array and gives you that. So let's say that we wanted to run this function on twenty names. So we're going to make a. I'm going to make an array of names here. So let names equals. We're going to add initials to them. So Mr. John. Mr. Johnson, Mr. Musk. All right, so now that we have these uh, pretty, admittedly not good names, we're going to use a for of loop to loop through all these names. So for const name in, not in, of names. All right, we're going to do remove initials. And we're, then we're going to send in the name. This is not the name that's up on top here. It's actually the name that we're using inside this for loop. So this name, so this name over here is equal to this name, which is not equal to the name above. The name above has nothing to do with this. So if we actually just save this part of the code, we're gonna, let me just console.log this so that we can actually see what happens. If we save that and went and took a look at it, as you can see, I'm screwing something up. All right, so if we actually just uh, go back to our code here, what am I screwing up? Okay, so remove initials. All right, so all right, so let name equals name dot split. So if we do that without the let name part because that's an, because that's a typo. So if we do that, I'm pretty sure we should get the result that we want. Yes, we do. All right, so as you can see, we get an array, so we can remove the first value from an, from this array, and then we can get and then we can get the person's name. So Mr. Johnson. So that's so that's how we would make a function that removes initials. It's not complete. But I'm basically giving you an example and I didn't want to get hogged down by the details and that's why I didn't complete it. So we're making this function with this cool syntax 
and then this function takes in a parameter which is the thing that we want to that we want this function to modify that's where parameters go you can have functions without parameters this works if it didn't need anything from the outside world uh, from the outside world this would definitely work all right so if we actually just re-add that in so that's how functions work experiment 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 and experiment and when you can't possibly experiment some more i want you to, to do it again all right so we've talked about this Next up, we have these cool things called the document object model, or the DOM. So what's the DOM? The DOM is used when you want to basically modify your HTML with your JavaScript. So what, what can you do with a DOM? So let's say that inside our body here, we had a div with an ID of main div. All right, so I'm just making this stuff up. All right, so you can access this div with a few elements. So let's say let main div. So we're making a variable called main div. And then we're going to set this to equal document to, to modify anything inside the document object model or the DOM will need to do document and then dot. So here we're going to do dot get element. All right, so get element by ID. Now we send, now we get, now we pass in the ID that we want. So the ID here should be, should always be a string. Now I know we suddenly jumped to this really strange thing called the DOM, but don't worry about it. You, you understand all this stuff with a lot of experimentation and you'll be fine. All right, so we're gonna do main div. All right, so we can do a few interesting things to this main div now that we have it inside our code. We can remove it, but you wouldn't realize, you wouldn't notice if we removed it. So let's actually just make so let's actually just add some text here. So hello, I am a main div. So if we actually just have this example over here with a main div, and uh, went and took a look at the page, as you can see, it says hello, I'm a main div. So we have the div there. So the first thing, so a few things we can do to it is we can basically remove it. So we can do main div dot remove. So if we did main div dot remove there, we've just deleted the div. Now it's non-existent on the page and you can't really see it. All right. So that's one thing you can do. You can do a ton of other stuff like change the text, inner text, inner HTML if you want it to add actual HTML inside it. So that's that. And then you can do style. So we're going to do main div dot style dot background color all right we're gonna do background color equals green so if you actually just do this here and save that and take a look at it as you can see the background color for this div becomes green and that's the result that we want ah my throat hurts all right let's keep going so taking a look so taking a look everything here looks pretty decent and that's how the style tag works and that's how the remove works so let's remove those from our list all right, so if you remove those from the list and take a look, yeah, everything looks the same. You can modify you can modify the text inside this element with inner text. So if you do inner text here, so am I doing am I doing this right? Yeah, we need to remove this style tag. Okay, so yeah, like that. Inner text equals I am a div modified by JavaScript. All right, so if we have this main div with that inner text here and save that and went and took a look at it as you can see it now says I am a div modified by JavaScript instead of saying hello I'm a main div so we're doing the result that we want that's how you would change it but let's say that we wanted to add HTML inside this div so what we would do we would do inner HTML so inner HTML alright so inside here we're gonna add an h1 so h1 hello I am a heading made by Java script all right so if we have this part over here and uh, just uh, let me just close out this h1 and save that and uh, cross my fingers because i'm sure if this works yeah yeah it actually does usually i'm trying to double check for typos because adding html to javascript is a pain and that's basically why react exists all right so as you can see it says hello i'm a heading made by javascript so we are getting the result that we want just make sure that you when you use inner html and inner text Make sure that you, when you use the equal sign, don't forget that the don't forget that everything that used to be inside a div or text or will be completely deleted. So just keep that in mind. Next up, we have query selector. Now, if you actually just take a look, as you can see, if you take a look, we have get 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 all these by whatever. These are all old, and you shouldn't use them. I just showed you the example with get element by id, just in case you see it, you wouldn't have a freak out because they're basically the same as query selectors, except query selectors are the new way of doing it without having to use uh, jQuery and all that stuff because jQuery is dead now. All right, so let's do query selector. All right, so if we do query selector here, how can we access this div with the ID through query selector? Well, we do use the hash 
So you would ha use the hash simple to tell to tell query selector, hey, I want you to select an ID, so main div. All right, now we have the exact same div that we had before. We can modify it. We can do anything we want to it, same way with before. So I'm gonna just do change the main color of it. So div dot style dot back round color equals green. This is the this is completely the same as before. All right, so if we save that and take a look at it, as you can see, the background color of this div is green. So it's completely the same as before. So yeah. Query selector is basically the new version. If you wanted to access a class, so any element with a class, so instead of dot main div, let's say that we had uh, working class. All right, so if we had this div with the working class, all right, so if we had this thing here and we actually selected that, now that div doesn't exist. That's how we, that's how you would select items with a class with the dot syntax. Let's say that we wanted to select just a div, any div, you would use the uh, you would just do div. So if you just did div, you would select the div. But let's say you had like 50 divs. Which one would it select? It would select the first div. But what if I wanted to get all the divs? Well, we can instead of doing query selector, we can do query selector all. So if we did query selector all and had the 20 divs here, it would return an array of divs. So if we, so if we, all right. So let me just remove these IDs D to a. Alright, so let me just remove those. Just, just to make sure that nothing bad happened. So instead of main div, I'm gonna call this. I'm gonna call this divs because it's an array. So console.log divs alright so if you actually just save that take a look at it query selector all gets you an array of all the items that match your query so here we have a div and we have a couple of divs on screen so if we do query selector all we would get those divs so as you can see you get a node list which is basically an array don't worry about the differences here it's basically an array you can access it you can modify it and yeah that's how you can uh, get all the items in an array through query selector and query selector all. And don't forget, if you see get element by ID and stuff like that, don't worry about it. That stuff is uh, that stuff is the same as uh, query selector and query selector all. It's just really old and it's preferable that you use query selector because it simplifies stuff. And it's the new thing and new stuff is cool. Alright, so next up we have the element class list. So let's say that we wanted to select this main div. So let me remove these. So let's say that we wanted to add a class or remove a class from this div. How would we do that? Well, to do that, we're going to make this main div. So let main div equals document document dot query selector. All right. So if we do query selector here, hash main div, we have this div. Let's say that we wanted to add a class to this div. Well, we would use the class list. So we would do main main div dot class list dot add, and then you have dot and then you have dot contains to check if it has a class, and then you can look through each class. And then you can, uh, you have all the stuff, but the ones that you really care about are add and remove. So you can remove a certain class and add a certain class to this, to this uh, class list. So let's say I'm going to make, I'm going to make a few style tags here. So let me just uh, make the, let me just make a class. So dot green background color is green. And then I'm going to make another class dot huge font size 10 rem right. now that we have these two classes in place let's how would we add them to this main div through css through uh, through javascript well we would do main div dot class less dot add let's add the green class make sure that you use uh, make sure that you use a string for this so if you actually save that piece of code right there and uh, take a look at it as you can see we get the class added we get the green class added to this div, so we're getting the result that we want. Let's say we wanted to remove this class. What would you do? Well, instead of add, you just do remove. All right, so we will do remove. As you can see, now it looks normal because we add the class and then we remove it instantly. All right, so if we go back to our code here, there are a few other things we can do with this uh, with class list. So let's say we're gonna add so main div dot class dot add huge. I'm just mad. I'm just adding these just for fun. All right, so if we save that and take a look at it, as you can see, <laughs> you get this massive, massive tip. So we're getting the results that we want. Now we're almost done here. We just have to cover a few more things. We have to cover events. So what's an event? An event is something that happens when something to your page happens. So let's say you click a button that fires an event. You can intercept that event with JavaScript, and you can modify your code accordingly. And you can modify it and run code when that event happens. So let's give an example. Let's add an event listener to this div. So document, not document, the item, main div. So after that, you would do add 
So you do add event listener, and that notice the syntax here because it gets really complex really fast. Firstly, you would you want to string with the name of the of the event. So the name of the event will be click, and then after that you want to make you know, and then after that you would pass in a function. So you can do function, and then the event. So you can access the event itself, and then after that you basically make a regular function here, except that you're not defining a function name, or you can make a function that's outside. So function handle event event. This also works, so instead of you doing function here, you could just uh, do handle event like this. So instead of doing function, you would do handle. So you, do, you would just do handle event here, and then you would remove this part. And then you would remove this part, this part, this part here, and take a look. As you can see, now you can have a now you can have an event listener that looks like this, and this definitely works. But uh, I don't want to do that at the moment. I'm just going to keep things super simple. All right, so function event. And then in here, and then in here, just make sure that you don't screw up the syntax because it's easy to screw up. Just uh, double check that you have your your curlies, your squares, and all that stuff. You have those uh, punctuation marks, should I say, set up properly. So here we're gonna make change the main div's color. So main div dot class class dot add huge. So when you click this div, it should get huge if I wrote my code right. So if I save that here. And I took a look at it. As you can see, it says "Hello, I am a main div." If I click that, yes, it works. I didn't screw up the syntax. Yeah, but even I tend to screw these items up, up from time to time. So don't get discouraged if you actually do that. All right, so that's one thing you can do. But let's say that we didn't want to have the main div. We can use event.target. So what's event.target? So event.target is the thing that ha that uh, the event happened to, to put it simply. So the event target will be the div that we click. So event.target. So we could just in theory do event dot target dot class list dot add huge. This would work. So if we save this here and took a look at it, as you can see, we get the same result. It worked. It worked properly, and we have everything working. And yeah, so that's one thing you can do. Even though this code is screwed up and it happened to work due to a quirk of JavaScript. That's how the event.target thing works. You, there are also other interesting things inside the event object here that you can check out and modify. So if, if it's a keyboard, you can check which key you, which key that you press and click and stuff like that. And we're done with the JavaScript series. Congratulations, everyone. We've finished HTML, CSS, responsive design, and now we've finished JavaScript. Everyone, every one of you should give yourselves a, bat, a pat on the back because we've just finished the first step of you becoming a web developer. You finish the first thing and there are a few things you can do. One, I would make three to four projects, three to four projects that you would use to make sure that you understand everything here properly. You can make your own, but if you feel stuck, you don't have to make the next big thing. I'm not asking you to make Instagram, although it would be preferable and really cool if you did. But basically, you want to make three to four projects that use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and responsive design to make something that looks epic. The first thing you want to make is a stopwatch app. So if you actually go to Google here, so if I actually just uh, Google here, so if I do timer, so if I do timer here on Google, it gives you this cool timer thingy that you can use to add, set a timer and stuff like that. You can use that. That's one, that's one project you can make. I want you to try to make that project out. Then you can make a personal website for yourself because um, because with the information we got, you can definitely do that too. Yeah, because now you can add the cool, the cool stuff to the site that you've already made if you've done the first lectures and second lectures homework. That's the second project that I want you to do. I want you to flesh out your uh, I want you to flesh out your website and have a running example live. And uh, yeah, that's how you can basically uh, use CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. The, after you've done those projects, after you've done those projects you can move on to react and then you can become a full stack web developer by learning how to modify servers and stuff like that or you can focus exclusively on front end and making stuff look cool and turning designs into into and turning mockups into real designs and stuff that actually works now yeah, but paths paths tend to split pretty soon from here but don't worry about it you guys you guys have done a great job so far and i'd love and i'd love to see what projects you end up coming up with and i'll see you on the next lecture